1954's Brown v. Board of Education is often hailed as the Supreme Court ruling that effectively ended segregation in public schools in the United States, except that it didn't. For a significant portion of the 20th century, schools across the United States were legally segregated with separate but equal, <coughs> sorry, not equal, sorry, it's not in my throat, not equal facilities and resources for black and white students. However, after repeated challenges from the NAACP, the Supreme Court ruled in 1954's Brown v. Board of Education that separate facilities for blacks and whites were inherently unequal. And in one master stroke, public school segregation across the United States became technically illegal. The key word in that sentence being technically. See, despite the fact that the Supreme Court ruled that school segregation was now unconstitutional, the court never really provided any sort of guidance as to how to enforce this new desegregation policy. So a lot of school districts just never desegregated. In fact, by 1963, almost 10 years after the Brown v. Board of Education decision was handed down, only 1.2% of black children in the American South actually attended integrated schools. And what's worse, not a single black child in Alabama, Mississippi, or South Carolina attended a school with any white children. And to be clear, this wasn't just a Southern issue. In fact, by 1969, 57% of black children in Northern states attended segregated schools. Clearly, this was an issue that needed to be dealt with. And that issue would be dealt with on October 29, 1969, when the Supreme Court reached its decision in the Supreme Court case, Alexander v. Holmes. In its ruling, the Supreme Court ordered the immediate desegregation of American schools. No more excuses in the middle of a school year. It had to happen immediately right now. Alexander v. Holmes seismically shifted what American schooling would look like overnight. And nowhere was this felt more than in Mississippi. American Experience's new film, The Harvest, takes a closer look at what it was like to be the first racially integrated class in the small town of Leland, Mississippi. And it's streaming right now, so check it out if you're interested. Now, despite the resistance of many white communities across the US, Alexander V. Holmes' results were rapid. While 68% of black students attended majority black schools in the United States in 1966, that number dropped significantly to 49% by 1970. But as more of these schools began to integrate, white families found another way of resisting, by moving. As suburbs sprang up across the country, many white families left the cities in droves. And in many cases, black families faced numerous restrictions when trying to move to these suburban communities, which meant that countless cities were left with overwhelmingly black urban school districts, while the surrounding suburbs were predominantly white schools. These segregated suburban school districts were prevalent in many northern cities, like Detroit, where the NAACP filed suit against Michigan state officials in 1970. The NAACP argued that desegregation was a state responsibility and that Detroit should be able to integrate its schools with the surrounding suburbs. The Supreme Court stepped in, and in their 1974 ruling Milliken v. Bradley, found that solutions for segregations within a district could only take place within that district. What does that ruling mean? Means that so long as cities and suburbs were segregated, so too would their schools be segregated. Right around the same time, black American parents were suing the Boston School Committee over school segregation in their city. A federal judge agreed with the parents and in 1974 found that the Boston public school system had been deliberately segregating the city's schools. He ordered school officials to immediately implement a desegregation plan that involved busing both black and white students across the city of Boston. However, this busing order faced strong and sometimes violent backlash from some of Boston's white residents who organized boycotts and massive protests. In fact, if you'd like to learn more about Boston's struggle to integrate, feel free to check out American Experience's other new film, The Busing Battleground. School integration happened across the country, but did you know that it wasn't just a Southern story? Or how long the fight to integrate took place after Brown v. Board of Education? Let us know in the comment section below. And again, make sure to check out both of American Experience's new films, The Harvest and The Busing Battleground. I'm Sammy Jarouche, and that's what the history 